All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about the shadow of dissatisfaction, how it might be showing up for you. And I'm calling it a shadow because a lot of us like to pretend like we're not dissatisfied when we really are because we wanna be good, because we wanna be positive, because we want to, you know, it might be religious conditioning, it might be unconscious religious conditioning, but basically acknowledging that you're unhappy somewhere is unacceptable to you. But don't you think that might be a good idea, right? In order for you to stop, you know, if, if you allow yourself to see that you are dissatisfied, um, a few things could happen. First, it could, the dissatisfaction could lift, right? Because you spend so much energy convincing yourself that you're happy that once all of that stops, the seeing or making contact with something that is real creates a lot, like, a return of energy and that um, it gives you the, the sensation of freedom and options um, but it will also help your life move forward in positive ways and you know dissatisfaction can be tricky because if you have been pretty hard on yourself in other words if you've tried really hard to be good and especially people that are learning metaphysics and people that are trying to apply um, metaphysical law to create more favorable conditions in their lives you know people just can't accept or they can't see that they actually are dissatisfied and because dissatisfaction is softer than anger and it's softer than rejection right it might actually be so familiar to you that it feels like peace so i like to kind of talk about stuff that that might be very familiar to us that we might not be able to recognize um because we've basically been maybe dissatisfied like our whole life um and so dissatisfaction can be in the same way that a lot of people need to get angry or resentful at someone in order to leave a situation, like in order to leave a job, in order to leave a partnership or a situation or an event. Like people don't feel free to make choices. So they need to basically propel themselves away by creating negative emotion. But so, like I said, dissatisfaction is a little softer. Um, how do you, how do you know if you are, like how might this show up as a symptom? Well, let's say you're with humans, right? I, I like to remind people that like a lot of people that are on a spiritual path spend a lot of time alone which is desperately needed in many ways but the benefit about of being around people especially around people from your past or people who are in your family is that you get to truly see how you actually feel about yourself in certain situations so if you are interacting with a family member or you are interacting with an intimate partner or you are interacting with a child right like do you tend to point out um, not necessarily what's wrong with them but like what's wrong in their life so like oh so have you called the therapist yet like so so what's the deal are you gonna leave your job like you start the conversation with kind of a low vibration like that's all you can it's like you don't feel comfortable to open up and really connect with someone so you put on this kind of rigid armor and then you try to connect from that place and it's always icy right dissatisfaction can really make you icy and rigid because and rigid might look like apathetic rigid might look like You know, some people like to, they really enjoy, this is a game that they play with people. They like to be a mystery. They like to leave people hanging or leave people in a question mark 
right? We set people up to feel how we feel. So if a person feels dissatisfied or feels like not happy with themselves or maybe they don't trust themselves, like they will set up an aura of suspicion uh, in their field. They will, um, people will report that they feel like abandoned by them um, because they, 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 ha they play this game. They like to be silent and withdrawn in order uh, basically to have control over people, right? That this makes them feel powerful. Um, and so just, I mean, that's a little heavier than dissatisfaction, but if you are the kind of person who's nitpicking all the time, um, nitpicking, right? If you are a really good awareness question to ask yourself is like, what makes me hyper vigilant? What makes me hyper vigilant? Um, whatever you pay a lot of attention to, you should really inquire what that's about because basically you feel incredibly threatened by it. Is there a particular person that you feel hyper vigilant about? Do you tune into them? Like a lot of people um, stalk other people on social media. Um, a lot of people, like maybe you're around a brother or a sister or a parent and like as soon as you hear their voice, you become hyper vigilant around them or unable to relax, right? Ask yourself like, what age, what age is this? Like, what age is this reaction from? What do I believe about myself? What is the deep fear that I have in this situation that's making me pay such close and intense attention to someone in a stressful way? Because we become hyper vigilant about things that we deeply fear and that we kind of need to keep an eye on in order so that we don't lose sight of them so that they don't hurt us, right? So what am I hyper vigilant about? Now, dissatisfaction is kind of like, it can be like a cover up for deeper things. Um, but if you can get to the layer, if you can admit to yourself, right, that you are dissatisfied, a lot of people also, they, mistaken peace for being spaced out so let's say you really don't like where you live or you really don't like a lot of aspects about your life situation so you space out right maybe that literally feels like you you're not in your center in your core in your central channel you're kind of like floating out there you feel kind of diffused um, and you know sometimes an open focus experience is just natural especially in awakening like my experience is my, how I feel myself kind of fluxes, you know, like when I'm interacting with people or when I'm focused on something, I'm like, whoosh, like a laser. And then the, uh, the focus kind of does diffuse, but I don't feel spaced out. I feel like radiant, if that makes sense. Um, but let's say, you know, Let's say like you really truly are unhappy about something in your life. You are dissatisfied, but you can't feel it or you can't see it because you're spaced out all the time. Well, so ask yourself, what would it look like if you feel like what I'm saying is true for you? It's like, how does that show up for me? How does my dissatisfaction show up for me? When somebody asks me about my life, do I feel shame? Do I feel shame? We want to be aware of dissatisfaction because it points to something deeper. It points to something deeper. It's like a masking emotion. So that's why I'm going into deeper things and going back to dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction is a protective mechanism that we think um, keeps us safe, um, keeps us unapproachable, or keeps us um, impenetrable, right? Like if you're afraid of your family members asking you about your life. Oh, like, are you pregnant yet? Um, or, you know, those questions that tend to trigger people. Um, well, that wouldn't bother you unless, unless you were dissatisfied with your life, right? If some, s people making comments about your life or asking about your life um, in a certain way would not trigger you or make you uh, stressed unless 
you really weren't happy with your life. And so that's important to acknowledge, right? That's important to acknowledge, like, I am not happy with my life. Maybe I do believe that I should be somewhere else or someone else. Okay, that's real for part of you. Okay, maybe I do believe that, you know, for me, I had a belief, and this is a, a deep collective belief of, in the female, in women. I had a belief that was shocking to see right because we always think we're more evolved than our parents or our grandparents but these thoughts are inside us and the deeper you're awakening right the deeper you're going to see into like kind of the matrix of the human mind as well right so sometimes it might shock you to see just how influenced you are by your family but i had a thought that i literally had no reason to live unless i was a mother and i realized like looking at it and tuning into it you know, I, I hear a lot of people at my mom's age saying, well, if you're not going to have a career, like, then you have to be a mother because you have to contribute in some way. Like, and I agree. I agree about contributing. Um, but if you don't have a, a conventional job, then you do the mother thing and that will bring you fulfillment. And then people, my grandmother, you know, my grandmother's um, age, <clears throat> It's almost like if you didn't have a child, like you were an invalid or something. I That was in my mind. Like if I don't have a child, I'm an invalid. Like I don't exist, like I don't have a purpose. Um, and I avoided that. And the way that that showed itself was the avoidance of ending a relationship that could have been ended earlier than it did. Ultimately, that's not true, but it dragged on for longer than necessary, really. Um, so uh, it's important to acknowledge the dissatisfaction in your life. Sometimes it's covering something deeper, like shame that you have about who you are. Sometimes it's a message, right? Sometimes you're not meant to be satisfied with the situation because you're, you're being called somewhere else. It's impossible. It's impossible to be satisfied with something that really does not feel true and compatible for you. So, like, I remember in a relationship that I, that I was in, like, I adored and deeply loved that person. I really did. And I could have seen myself spending my life with that person, but an, the, the deeper, the deepest part of me felt, I wouldn't say dissatisfied, but it felt like there was a sense of drag. Like, this isn't... Mm, this isn't in your highest good, let's put it that way. Um, and when I finally let myself see that, a lot of truth about the situation I was in was revealed, right? When, I, when you're real and true with yourself, truth is revealed to you. Like, you, the universe is holographic. So if I'm real and true with myself, if I stop deceiving myself, if I have a nagging voice inside me that's calling me somewhere, you know, or that still small voice, and I keep snuffing it out with even spiritual concepts, which I talk a lot about because that happened to me, right? Um, even an idea like unconditional love, even an idea like raise your vibration and change your attitude. Energy is deeper than attitude because your attitude changes your emotion, but the current of life is underneath emotion. So no matter what you do with your attitude, right? Changing your attitude will help you exit the situation in a more pleasant way. And I do acknowledge that the attitude work that I did brought to me, probably raised my vibration to the point where I could see the truth, actually. Mm. Where I could finally see the deeper truth that I was being called elsewhere. So it's all perfect. But... Listen to your dissatisfaction. Be first and foremost, if you are dissatisfied with any aspect of your life, admit it to yourself. Admit it to yourself. Sometimes it's a message. Sometimes it's covering up. Sometimes it's a masking emotion. It's it's a guard. It's a it's a sometimes it's a weapon actually. You know, if you you know, have you ever seen the movies where people go to dinner and you know maybe you go back to your family's house for christmas or whatever you know you go somewhere or you go to your 
uh, you go with like your husband or wife to a like a dinner for work and you really hate all the people there so all you do is like um, insult everyone or you make little snide comments about the food being mediocre um, you know we can use dissatisfaction as a weapon to snuff out other people's light because we actually feel helpless we don't have to use dissatisfaction or harm to get us away from things that we don't want right that's the child's perspective from the child's perspective it is forced to do everything it is forced to do everything so the reaction that the child has is that it must have um it must come up with defenses with strategies to to give itself what it wants it needs and so of course that's like you know a three-year-old or a five-year-old or a ten-year-old can only think of so many things right but the thing is then we become adults and we continue playing out these perspectives and people say how did i create that how did i create that i have a good attitude i i go through the motions i meditate i do this yet Yet in your interactions with humans, it's actually coming out that you're using, um, you're not in your heart, basically. You're not in your heart. So that's why I say like the, the most potent practice that you could do is first be real, learn how to feel, be real and learn how to feel. And, but even more than that, marinate in the vibrations of cosmic love, higher love, devotional energy because those energies will draw out the heart literally draws up survival energy like it's like those survival energies in the lower three chakras when you're in your heart and you put awareness in your heart it's like a magnet that draws up the energy and it like repurposes it in a way or at least it exposes it so that you can in the moment where it's arising, you can be in your heart and you can have it wash through the heart and become repurposed into creative energy that you can use with intention. So ask yourself, dissatisfaction is a good one to look for. It's a good one because it can hide in its subtlety. If it doesn't, if you're a person that's so used to using dissatisfaction as a weapon, as a defense, but then, you know, it might be it might actually feel quiet and peaceful to you so you might be trying to change your life with like raising your vibration but you don't realize that what you call peace and what you call silence and what you call feeling pretty good is actually dissatisfaction so how do you know you're dissatisfied well spend more time feeling satisfied that doesn't mean feeling satisfied about a thing that means open feeling your body being outside feeling the sunlight feeling 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 joy in a real experiential way feeling your heart that's always joyful right the, the heart might have a lot of wounding you might not have access to that joy yet but there's something there's some doorway for you to begin to create contrast whether it's meditation which is my preferred way and like i said uh, I mentioned meditating with sound and I forgot to mention the artist. The songs, my, my two favorite songs that I use all the time are, um, they're called Luminous. And I don't think it's the real spelling of Luminous. I think it's like L-U-M-I, I don't know. It's Remco, it's R-E-M-K-O something, Luminous and the artist Remco and Ultraviolet. So I let those songs take me really deep into like a really deep relaxation, basically into like theta bordering on delta. And then I meditate, I feel the frequency of higher love or un not unconditional love. Unconditional love is, like I said to me, it's like too cerebral of a term. Like the music helps you tap into this epic feeling. So the words higher love, cosmic love, like those are epic words to me. So like my desire to merge with them is like this surrender of my body, of my cells, of basically of my subconscious mind to love. And it, it's amazing. It's like, uh, 
lingering issues that I had with digestion. I had, you know, I mentioned that the second chakra for me um, was when Kundalini went through that chakra. A lot of content came out. That was for me the most shut down chakra. It was almost frozen. And my lower belly was distended pretty severely, like for years. And part of it was um, despair that I held about losing pregnancies, but it was about my own childhood. But anyway, so since I've been doing this practice, my belly completely flattened out again and it feels comfortable again. Um, I've mentioned as well, you know, if you want to do, if you want to start practice practicing using sound or frequency, which is sound to me, like frequency, like so picking up, there's a meditation called Blessing of the Energy Centers 3 by Joe Dispenza, and um, you pick a symbol or astral energy that would be the medicine for the chakra. So the first chakra could be an anchor, right? If you're trying to anchor stability, especially if you're trying to learn to come back into your emotions and like anchor a feeling of stability. And the second chakra, I, I always picture Mother Mary's womb and my womb because that represents to me um, Christ consciousness and like deep nourishment. But I used to also use um, the feeling of freedom. So I would feel myself almost like a bird soaring over a creek and I would play that movie or feel like I was the bird while focusing on the second chakra. On the third chakra, I would basically put um, either Babaji because the, the third chakra is the personal mind the personal adult mind and you know Babaji is a master and or I put a sun a radiating sun which represents me being in my own energy because especially because I work in all the dimensions I'm very aware of when people think about me when people tune into me um people have a sexual thought about me or people and I'm not like, you know, that's just happened a few times. People's astral bodies come to you, right? When they have uh, a thought about you, especially with intense emotion. And so for a while I felt bombarded by that. And I, and I told myself like, I understand in a way that it's a gift, but I prefer to be in my own energy, at least for now. I wanna be in my own energy. I don't wanna be feeling every energy, you know? And so I would anchor the, the sun the sun radiating instead of absorbing radiating and the heart i always put a star of david with a heart inside which it's interesting because the heart chakra the the actual chakra has a star of david in it you know in the hindu system in the yoga system um to me i resonate deeply with um i know i spent a lot of years as like an Essene. <laughs> Like I, I really resonate with mystical Judaism, but for, so for me, I anchor the feeling of wholeness in my heart. I anchor the feeling of wholeness in my throat because that's where I'm missing a lot of body parts, right? So I'm, you know, I talk to the soles of the lymph nodes and the and the thyroid, and I like, I feel whole as I have that image in my gaze, and I feel whole in my throat. Um, the third eye, I don't really use a symbol for. I don't necessarily want to energize my third eye. Sometimes it's overactive or sometimes it's, sometimes it's like I want it to calm down. <laughs> so those aren't as important, but that's a good way to begin like anchoring frequencies. Um, oh, and in the eighth chakra, I always put my rainbow light body. Um... And so it's like there's a door opening and the rainbow light comes streaming in and I feel myself in my rainbow light body aura. So, you know, are those things about being needing to be somewhere else or being better? No. But the, the truth of the matter is like it's, it's a way to tone the nervous system to accept certain amounts of light. Um, because you're, we're so familiar with our conditioning that it can be, it feels like a physiological death. It actually is a physiological death 
for the body because the subconscious mind is being purged. So if the body is a reflection of the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind is purging its fear and, and then, you know, being reconstructed, like the body is actually being reconstructed. Um, so I like to point out like how we avoid our feelings so we can like release the energy, release the energy, release the energy, release the energy. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's not about improving yourself. It's not about, um, it's about like, at least in my, I'm sharing just my experience. And if it resonate with, resonates with you, that's great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I've had such a influx of electricity and light that I have had to learn um, in a very deep way how to be able to hold that frequency because if otherwise it could feel like it could feel like you're getting electrocuted it could feel like you're it's like you can't hold it so so then you you start to do what you did as a child like in the same way that you couldn't handle the light uh, or the experience of the chaotic emotions like if you can't handle the intensity of the light first of all I would ask myself am I afraid of the light and the, and the answer is yes, on some degree, on some level, because it's not familiar. It's not as familiar as your family, as your childhood, right? So the things that I share about sound, about meditation, about bathing and marinating and frequencies, like if you can practice it while it's not challenging, you can do it in your life when you're with humans, which is the most important thing, right? Because that's what you, what you give to the world is your presence, is your joy. And yes, like in the absence of resistance and the absence of wanting and the absence of dissatisfaction, like your natural state is joy. Um, but there's like different levels of joy. There's ecstasy. There's a soft joy that really like when enlightenment sinks, when your mind sinks into your heart, like there's always a soft joy about you. Even if you still have some conditioning left, like you joyfully just kind of calm, like peacefully allow it to be there and move. But, but like I said, I, we are both being itself and we are the creator. We are the creator. And while you should know that nothing you create will ever make you happy, that's the foundation. That's your foundation. I, I saw yesterday, even Eckhart Tolle is talking about manifestation now. And I think that's so great because it's like okay it's not just about being in meditation and just being and just being it's like no create 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 you are creator creator must create and how do you know you're not in alignment with yourself as creator well if you start to feel tired if you start to feel overwhelmed you know abraham hicks says you can't get rid of desire you can't because that's god that's a stream from god's mind like pummeling into your experience like trying to move you somewhere and so if you know who you are if you wake up to reality that we are all one and that we are love then we can be in desire with love and we can create amazing things in the world not to improve ourselves not to show off not to be special like just for for the joy of it like for the joy of creation that's we are joyful creators. So ask yourself, dissatisfaction might be so normal to you. It might be just like the background of your existence. Look for it, look for it, admit it to yourself. And then ask yourself, what is this about? Am I trying to protect myself? Am I trying to protect myself from somebody else? Am I trying to protect myself from seeing how I really feel about myself? How I really feel in this relationship? Will I have to make decisions if I let myself see this? Start to inquire into your experience and then all the energy that you spend hiding it from yourself will give you so much energy that you'll be inspired to keep going and you'll be inspired to bring the love of your of your of source um, shedding shed light onto these parts of you that don't know who they are like that it'll become joyful so this was a little all over the place, but it was from my heart. I hope you enjoyed it.